Welcome to our show and welcome to uh, Aquaponics. Uh, we're going to chat to you a little bit now about propagation in particular. Um, Dealey is the proprietor of the business and I call her the godmother of hydroponics and aquaponics in Western Australia. Most of the large commercial operations started out in this shed in the sense that uh, the, the operators came here to learn the game uh, of how to grow plants, tomatoes, lettuce, all that sort of stuff uh, here and then took it out and, and now there's some fantastically successful businesses in Western Australia. But it all comes back to propagation. So Delia, what are we doing? What are we doing? Um, I'm going to do tomatoes. All right, so there's your tomato plants. There's your main stem. Now there's a lateral there. It shouldn't be there. And why shouldn't it be there? The whole idea of taking the laterals off is that uh, every second shoot on a tomato stem is a flowering shoot which will produce fruit. The other one is a vegetative shoot which will produce another uh, branch. So if you don't take those off, you finish up with a multiple pile of branches and not as much potential fruit as you can get. So um, as you're growing tomatoes, and it doesn't matter what system, the idea is to have one sing single major stem and, uh, no laterals. and no laterals, yeah. And also, um, if you see any flowers, you don't want those because it's not, it hasn't got roots, it can't produce flowers yet. So why would you want to propagate tomatoes? Well, it's very inexpensive. So if you've got one tomato plant to start off, you can grow uh, you know, a dozen or more uh, just by taking those unwanted side shoots and propagating them. And they're very easy to propagate. You reduce the leaf, it's too much for the plant. You take off the flowers, it hasn't got enough strength for them. And that is your cutting. I usually leave it in here for about an hour. So then, um, I usually soak them as well. I might just cut them. Now this material here is rock wool. So it's um, rock that's been heated to astronomical temperatures Volcanic and then rock. spun off. Yep. Um, so it's very um, water absorbent um, and it's also sterile. Um, so it's a good starting medium for propagating plants. So, all right, so I soak the, the cubes, the rock wool cubes, and then, what are we? We use this product, it's a, it's a cloning gel, so it promotes roots. And now there's a fascinating story about this particular product. It's West Australian invention. The fellow that invented it actually went to school with me at Armidale High School. Uh, so I, I kind of knew him then. It's now the world leading uh, plant cloning gel and it is sold uh, literally around the world, both commercially and also into home gardens. Uh, when I was a kid working in the nursery industry, uh, we used to use hormone powder uh, and it was a dreadful thing to use. Uh, it was very dusty. It was basically the hormones were dissolved into a talcum. So you had to sort of dip the cuttings into that and it was very easy to put too much on and whatever. This Clonex has just revolutionised uh, propagating by cuttings um, through that process. All right, here we go. So basically, you just, just go in there, sorry. I've forgotten about that. So Delia's just dipped them into the gel, which is this Clonex gel we've been talking about, and, uh, and just pop the cuttings into that. Grow wool. And one of the exciting things about propagation is, A, it's extremely cheap. In other words, you can, uh, at very low cost, produce your own plants. It's actually one of those great, fun, things to do. It's very exciting when you actually get the plant that you've stuck in there, the first roots come through. Um, I think in some ways it makes you feel a little godlike. <laughs> you 
you know, you're, you're actually uh, playing with nature at a very basic level and it's, it's good fun to uh, make it happen. And um, also it means you've got very lovely young fresh plants and if you're wanting to grow into aquaponics or hydroponic systems, you don't want soil. So this is the perfect medium to transplant into those systems. Now we just put the lid on that. And that's a little humidity house for them. During the day you could open that a little bit so it doesn't get too foggy and gets mouldy. And at night time you might want to close it. Ideally if you had a, a bottom heat that would keep the bottom of the the cubes all nice and warm and the top's a bit cool, that's what they need. And within probably about, in summer, about two or three weeks, you get something like, something like that. Oops. So it's a pretty amazing transformation in a short period of time. Always keep taking these laterals off. And that's the laterals, that's that there. Yeah, always take them off as soon as you can. Also the flower spike, you figure out there's too many, too many tomatoes in there, you know, you don't want too many, so the energy goes to all of these, but you don't want it to, so you trim that. And then you're gonna have one, two, three, four beautiful built tomatoes. Sometimes they've got about 10 or 12 in there, so there's too many and they're like little cherry tomatoes, you don't want that. So that's, that's what you get. Now this you can plant, Mike's going to show you what to do with these later. Now also, if you're not ready to plant it out because your system's full, what you can do, you can get one of these with the plant in it and chuck it in there and that will extend it probably another four weeks when the roots start coming through. In the meantime, your tomatoes are probably finished and then you can start again. That's another one. A couple of weeks ago, uh, there was an article in the Sunday Times about uh, a new glasshouse tomato growing setup in South Australia. It's a world first setup. They're actually taking uh, salt water from, uh, I can't remember which golf it is in South Australia, uh, but it's near Port Lincoln. Uh, so the salt water is coming straight out of the sea, they're desalinating that and using the clean water to grow the crop uh, and the process uh, creates a lot of cool air which they can then blow into uh, some other crops that like cool conditions in the middle of summer. Uh, things like blueberries for an example um, where they relish that byproduct of the, uh, of the uh, system. So. Um, and that's aeroponics. Now when you saw those roots hanging out in an aeroponic system they start them off in these types of uh, rock wool containers and once the roots are ready they actually put that onto it's like a barrel there we go. and there's air uh, and nutrient solution pulsed through that as a mist. One thing, one thing I must tell you, do not put this back into the jar, it's contaminated for the next time, so just throw it out and start again. Um, now, what's next, Neville? Um, well, I reckon uh, maybe ginger and turmeric. <laughs> what about garlic? What about garlic? <laughs> okay. Garlic, some of these come from China, or they're from, and you can't grow them. And even some of the locals spray them, so you can't grow them. They won't, nothing will happen. So you either go to an organic shop and they usually have, they're not allowed to spray so they would probably work and what you do you pick the best looking one. And the best time to to put these in is like the shortest day which is about when level? Which is in June. Yeah. I usually start about March, April when all the bulbs, you know, all the other bulbs go the in. Power. Yeah so we put them, put them in usually about five centimetres below the surface and they want a pH of about seven, they like it a bit alkaline and I'll show you what I have come up with. So if you can imagine uh, around here. the rim of the Mediterranean yeah. is home country 
A lot of that is quite limey, poor quality soil, but it grows magnificent uh, garlic. Okay. Now that has quite finished because it's got a couple of months to go because all that green goodness has got to go in here and eventually they grow and get and then you then you get yourself the bulb. So keep some in the fridge in the paper bag and wait till the next year and do the same thing again. Um, well that's garlic. Now you want to do the ginger? Yep. Well ginger is uh, the, the archetypal um, herb of the uh, of the Asian nations um, these days it's being uh, re regarded as as a real health tonic so there's a lot of good things that come out of ginger the whole ginger family um, this is another member uh, it's called turmeric or turmeric and um, that one is is the darling of the uh, the, the health people these days, everyone's looking for ways of getting more turmeric into them. Um, these can be grown very successfully in uh, these hydroponic systems. So that's what turmeric looks like um, as a tuber. And uh, to harvest that you basically break off the, uh, the shoots like this um, and we usually just scrape off the skin or you can peel it off and um, we've tried a number of different methods of uh, treating it so one of them was we put them into the thermomix chop them up quite finely um, about that size and then put them into a freezer and so we've got turmeric all year round but the problem when you do that well there you go um, what we've, we've recently tried stir frying with it so just cutting it up in very finely, um, you know, um, what's that, two, three millimetres thick. Just chop it up and just throw it into a stir fry with your other veggies. Um, one thing about this stuff is it stains like the devil. <laughs> so um, on the counters, you know, on the bench tops, um, you have to come along afterwards with a bit of um, gumption in order to um, clean it up. It really hangs in there. Don't forget ginger is the same as garlic. Not all the gingers you buy in the shops will grow. Sometimes they actually pick out the little growing points so that you can't grow it. So when you get one, see that there? That's, that, that'll grow from there. Um, yeah, we'll break that up now later and pass them yep. up. Let it dry out for a few weeks so it's really dry so because this thing could go mouldy. And that's that one. The next and this is, a, this is a tropical plant. So the, uh, the World Centre for, well, sorry, the Australian Centre for Growing um, Ginger is Bundaberg in Queensland. And they uh, produce huge crops, and so much so that they can't process it at one particular time. Uh, so the interesting thing is that they take the skin off and then throw the uh, ginger into a brine solution. So I think it's about 10%, so 100 grams per litre of salt, uh, and then they just leave it there for up to 12 months. So they can then process it as they need to. The ginger that's got the chocolate around the outside still has come out of one of those salt baths. Uh, so it's a great way of preserving your ginger at home uh, in the fridge, um, and it will keep it going literally for many months. So if you're going to preserve the, the you know the, the pink ginger that's been sliced in the jar, you can only do it when it's just thick like this, and the skin hasn't formed yet. You slice it very 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 thin, and you put it in the solution, and it just goes pink. That's how they make it pink. So you see that you often can't do it now, like this. When you're um, when you're doing Japanese eating Japanese food, particularly sashimis. Um, you'll see that very finely sliced pink ginger. So it's pickled, but the essence is fresh and uh, finely sliced. All these are ready to go. Just put them in. So it looks a little bit growing point. What's next? What have I got? Oh yeah, the galangal. Now this is a this is like a ginger on steroids. <laughs> Here we go. This is a very strongly flavoured ginger. 
um, and usually it's thrown into a dish and then pulled out before it's served. Uh, one of my favourite um, soups is Tom Yum soup and that's prawns with uh, chilli and uh, it's a sort of hot and sour brew but this gives a lot of flavour. Now all three of these can be grown in the home garden. I would recommend growing them in pots uh, because it's easy to move them around and they are really summer crops as opposed to winter crops in the home garden. We can get away with growing them here because we've got a hot house. But even, even in the greenhouse, they're still not performing like summer. Summer, they're absolutely beautiful and green, but then they get cold and they go a bit yellowy. But by that time, they've done their job. And we've got, I don't know if anybody's interested in... I can't cut this up, I'm afraid. It's just a little bit too hard. So if somebody wants it, you can take it away. We'll get a pair of second twos, maybe. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Oh, that was just, if, when you plant the sap, just, just cut it here. Hang on, I'll cut it for you. Cut, cut it here? Yep. Just here, here. Oh, here, yep. Get rid of that. I'll leave, I'll leave that one. Now, one of the things about the turmeric, it has the most exquisite flower. So many of the gingers are grown for their flowers, and many of those are also edible. Um, as well as, as the, uh, the root structure or the rhizomes. Okay, folks, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we'll we'll uh, be doing some question and answers uh, uh, very shortly, but thank you very much for listening so attentively.